Hey, it's Chris Tarzan Clemens, and I just want to quickly go through my packing list for the Camino de Santiago. I just finished a little over a week ago. Um, I personally did the Camino in 18 days from St. John through Santiago de Compostela to uh, Fisterra, and that's pretty quick. That's a lot of uh, miles or kilometers each day. By no means is this a fast packing list. Uh, it, it might be kind of close to ultralight. I personally enjoy seeing how quickly I can do things or it's a challenge to me. Um, but as you'll see, this isn't completely ultralight, but it is pretty lightweight. And I do think that minimizing the weight on your back helps you maximize the enjoyability of an adventure. So maybe take this as a lightweight type of packing list for the, Cam the Camino. I guess we should start with my backpack. I decided to hike the Camino when I was already in Europe. I do have lightweight backpacks at home, but I was in Italy. I went to Decathlon, uh, the sporting goods store, and I bought this Quechua 30 liter pack for, uh, I don't know, like 50 euros. Um, it's pretty nice. It worked well for me. It fit everything that I needed for uh, several weeks on the Camino. If you can spend a little more time researching your backpack, maybe do it, maybe try it out before you get to the Camino. Literally my first day on the Camino was the first day I put this on um, and definitely had some some wear and tear over the first couple days just on my body and my hips, but that's the way it goes when you're backpacking. So um, I did find by the end of the trail, this Quechua 30 liter was good. If I didn't have some of the things here that I'll show you, I might've gone with a 20 or 25 liter, but 30 is a, a pretty solid option. So I should probably start with what I wore every single day. Uh, and first of all, it was just a, a baseball cap or a running cap. And this would keep the sun off my face and the rain out of my eyes. Uh, that was most important as it definitely rained quite a bit on me. Um, every day I, I walked in these Brooks Cascadia trail running shoes. I've pretty much only worn Brooks Cascadia since I hiked the Appalachian Trail uh, several years ago. But I definitely suggest running shoes because they're lightweight. You do have some support and some grip, but uh, you're going to get wet on the trail and your feet are going to get wet no matter what. So trail runners let you get wet pretty quick, but they dry out really fast as well. So I definitely appreciated that. I had two pair of socks that I transitioned between and I, I always wear the Njinji uh, toe socks. I don't know if I necessarily need to, but it keeps my toes from running, rubbing together. I didn't get any blisters on the, on the Camino, so I just had two pair of these. I washed one every single night let them dry on my backpack during the day, and that's all I needed. I walked in a pair of uh, swim trunks that I got from H&M for like $4. They're very simple. They had a lining on the inside, which really helped out, and they had some pockets. So during the day, if I was uh, coming into town, I could have my phone or some uh, money in my pockets, but uh, they're very uh, lightweight and they dry really fast. So every single night when I got into the albergue or a hostel or something, I washed them and I hung them out to dry. Um, or sometimes if they were still pretty wet because it was cold when I went, I'd put them into my sleeping bag or my uh, bed with me and try to warm them up overnight and then put them on in the morning. And then every day I walked with this Patagonia uh, running shirt. It's just a dry fit uh, running shirt that I got from a race several years ago. But Every single day I wore this, and then in the evenings I would wash this as well with shampoo or whatever soap I could find, try and get it to dry overnight. So that's pretty much what I wore every single day. Uh, water on the trail, I would fill up typically in the fountains along the way or maybe in a, a restaurant or albergue or whatever, but um, I just carried two small lightweight disposable bottles. If, uh, if they punctured or anything, I could buy a new one, but they're very simple, very easy. Um, so as far as uh, layers on top of that, because I did walk through some rain and some pretty cold weather, um, I picked up some gloves as I was hiking. I got pretty cold. I had to buy some gloves at an outfitter store along the way, but these gloves definitely helped keep my hands warm. Before I bought those, I, I brought these two buffs, and buffs are great for uh, wearing on your head, kind of covering your mouth in the morning if it's too cold, or eventually these just became my gloves. But uh, once I bought the gloves, these were able to keep my head warm as well. So I brought two buffs. I had a lightweight Patagonia wind jacket, just a wind shell. Very simple, just to keep me a little bit warm, but not a lot of insulation. For insulation, I brought my Montbell uh, thermal jacket. It's not real thick, uh, but it definitely helps a lot. And in the evenings, this is great to walk around town just with a thermal jacket because it's definitely cold in the evenings. 
And for my rain jacket, I brought this knockoff North Face um, non-Gore-Tex jacket that I bought in Vietnam last year. All of the seam sealing is coming out. It's not Gore-Tex. Um, it did rain and I got very wet, but it acted as a good wind shell or kind of like a hard shell a little bit just for a little bit of thermal, but it definitely helped. For when I got into town each evening, uh, I definitely wanted to get those shoes off of my feet, so I brought a pair of Lunas. They're just very simple, um, kind of running or adventure sandals. I really probably could have hiked in them as well, but I was covering a lot of miles, so I just didn't change anything up. But I brought sandals for each evening. I brought a nice, lightweight, short sleeve button-up shirt. I uh, kind of get classy or something. Um, I don't know, but it, it also dries really quick, dries really easy, and it doesn't weigh very much. I brought a long, a pair of long pants, uh, like zip-offs from REI. And really I bought, brought them uh, mostly for the evenings in case I had to get a little bit fancy, but there were several days that it was very cold out on the trail and I wore pretty much all of my layers. So this ended up being part of that. Um, I wore these pants a lot more than I thought I would and I'm definitely glad that I brought them. So I did come with two pairs of underwear. Uh, having the lining in the shorts for my day hiking meant that I didn't need to wear them. Um, I mostly just wore these in the evenings as soon as I'd shower and start to do my laundry that I'd put a pair of underwear on and my pants. Um, I probably didn't need two pair, but I brought two pair. I had one more t-shirt for the evenings. Also, maybe didn't really need, but I brought this. Uh, it did help eventually um, when I was really cold at night trying to sleep in some of the albergues, but I had an extra t-shirt. And then I had one extra pair of swim trunks with linings, uh, no pockets, so these weren't my daily hikers, but I typically slept in these. And again, if I had to wash them or anything, or if they got wet, if I did have to wear them hiking, they would dry really fast. So some other things that I brought, just a little bathroom kit, uh, including toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, uh, beard trimmers, pretty much everything fit into this. Uh, I would always carry a little bit of toilet paper because it uh, doesn't matter where you are, but you never know when you might need it. Very important. I did pick up some sunscreen along the way. It was, uh, I had a lot of rain, but it definitely was very sunny for several days. So I got a good little bottle of sunscreen that helped. I carried my headlamp, not so much for the hostels or albergues, but uh, the time of year that I was there and the, the mornings when I was hiking out, I was typically the first out of the albergues and I'd be on the trail for up to an hour, hour and a half in the, in the pitch darkness. So having a headlamp and some extra batteries is definitely a good idea. I brought my little bottle of shampoo, bought a couple more along the way. Very simple. There's stores and tiendas everywhere that you need it. Brought a little beer koozie because you never know when you need it. Um, so I always carry that with me. Had a pair of sunglasses. I really didn't wear them very often. Uh, mostly the hat covered my eyes and my face from the sun, but I did have a pair of sunglasses. And I carried this uh, medium size microfiber towel for showers. Um, it's pretty good. I don't think I would ever go any larger than this. Um, and <laughs> on the Camino, I'm not sure I would go any smaller either. So a medium size is probably pretty good. It packs light and it dries very quick. Uh, all of this was put into these dry bags that I've had since the Appalachian Trail. So I had several Alok sacks. They're basically an uh, industrial type of Ziploc bag. And then some Sea to Summit um, Sil Nylon dry bags to keep everything dry in my pack. Um, I did go through a lot of rain and you don't want to carry a bunch of extra water weight. So I had a lot of dry bags. For sleeping, I did bring a silk liner. Um, a Sea to Summit silk liner. I did a lot of research and some people said you don't need it. The albergues have blankets. I ended up in a few albergues and the municipal albergues where they didn't offer blankets. So basically you just got a bed and a disposable sheet. And the time that I walked through was pretty cold. So there were a few nights that I shivered through the night with literally everything that I just showed you on my body. Plus this and my rain jacket above me and I'd wake up with condensation everywhere. Um, so for me, having this silk sleeping bag liner was key and um, kind of a lifesaver. Now, uh, for me carrying my passport and money, I typically just do it in this uh, plastic bag. Very simple. I did have a camera with me, which is what is filming this right now, and a little tripod, but it came in this, along with some extra batteries and charging cables. Now in addition, um, I had my cell phone and 
some he uh, headphones. I did listen to a lot of books and such along the way. I was hiking pretty quick, so I, was, I spent a lot of time by myself, but I did enjoy it. Now, one additional thing would be maybe an external battery charger, and this worked well for my camera and my phone. Uh, not In all the albergues you might get in, there might not be a plug near you, so this just helped out quite a bit. One thing that most people will not carry with them is probably a laptop. Uh, for me, I work as I travel, and I knew I was gonna be on the trail for two to three weeks, and I needed to keep up with some of the projects for my clients. So I carried a laptop charger, some converters, and my entire laptop, uh, which doesn't take up a lot of space, but in a 30 liter pack, the way it all went in, it kind of did. So if I did not have to carry this with me, I probably could have gone with a 20 to 25 liter pack, but uh, for my livelihood, for making money along the way, I absolutely needed to take this with me. It worked well, and um, I wouldn't do it any other way. So the 30 liter pack worked for me, but if you don't need this, you might be able to go a little bit smaller. So, some things that I didn't need in my pack on the Camino. Uh, first of all would be probably two pairs of underwear. I probably could have got by with just one, and I probably didn't need that extra t-shirt that I would wear in the evenings because I had that button up and I could easily, every couple of days, just wash that button up short sleeve shirt and let it dry during the day. So I always have clean laundry. Some things that I wish I would have brought with me. Number one would have been a hat and gloves. Uh, my last couple of adventures, I have not brought a fleece hat or some fleece gloves. And this time, I definitely had to stop and buy some for 10 euros. My hands were so frozen one day, I couldn't, um, do anything. I couldn't operate anything at all. I couldn't even open my backpack. They were so cold. So a hat and gloves would be key. For the albergues in the evenings, my silk liner worked most of the time. But if I had brought a summer light sleeping bag, and if I had enough capacity in my backpack to bring some small summer light sleeping bag, that would have helped. So the municipal albergues typically do not offer blankets. The uh, private albergues typically do. So I tried to find the private albergues and they're typically a few euros more each night, but a few small towns, I, I there wasn't an option. So I had to stay in the municipal albergue and I shivered. So if I could have brought a summer light sleeping bag, I would have saved a little bit more money and stayed in the municipal albergues. And then I wouldn't have been as cold on those uh, nights. And the last thing that I might've brought with me that I didn't would be some running gaiters. I have a, a pair of Dirty Girl running gaiters that go over the top of my running shoes. A lot of the Camino de Santiago is this gravelly kind of dirt um, track or trail. And after a rain, your shoes start to pick up some of that gravel and dirt little pebbles and they invariably end up in your shoes. So several times a day, I just had to stop and empty out both of my shoes with all of the gravel and pebbles that I had accumulated over the last hour. And if I had worn Dirty Girl Gators like I do in some of the races that I do that are very dusty or dirty or a lot of uh, gravel, then that would have saved a lot of that. But other than that, that pretty much took care of me for nearly three weeks all across Spain from the Pyrenees to the Atlantic Ocean. And I highly recommend doing the Camino. It was, um, I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I went really fast. I know most people wouldn't want to do that, but I got a lot out of it. And I, I'm glad that I finally did the Camino. It's been on my list for several years and I'm just lucky that I ended up in Europe and that I had some time to go do it. And I'm, I'm thankful that I actually did. So, so I hope my packing list helps you prepare for your own Camino hike. Enjoy the trail, enjoy the country, enjoy the people, and buen Camino.